As a believer, I'm sure you want other people to find the hope in Jesus that you've found. Organic outreach is a way of finding your own natural, authentic way of, of reaching people. And it, it, can, it can happen right here on a, on a job site like we see. If you're a believer at some time, you came to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. He came into your life. He's guided your life. And I'll bet he's given you the hope that keeps you going day by day and keeps you walking with God. It's the first part of our mission statement because we want as many people as possible to find that life-changing experience that they can find through him. Outreach is a part of everything. If you're helping to get the bagels ready, slicing them on a Sunday morning, that's outreach. If you're helping in children's ministry, teaching children through Bible studies and different interactive sources, that's outreach. If you're greeting people on a Sunday morning, you don't know that that person could be coming to church for their first time in a long time, or maybe even for the first time ever. And that smile that greets them may be the first smile that they've had that week. That's outreach. Setting up for the music ministry, playing an instrument, singing, that's outreach. We don't know that who we see in the grocery store that day might just need a friend for the moment. You may meet them in the line, you may meet them at the post office, you may meet them at the gas station, you may meet them on a job site. But just letting them know that they're loved and then finding a way to let them know that that love flows from Jesus, that is outreach. That is helping as many people as possible. Well, this morning we're beginning a four-week series called Deeper. We're going to be talking about, you know, going deeper in the things of God, going deeper spiritually, going deeper personally. But, but let's, let's begin with a little, a little more just kind of common imagery, and that would be just going deeper in terms of water. I want you to imagine that you're standing on a shore of a beach or on the deck of a boat. Sometimes these boats will go out and they'll take tours, even like right out, out here at, at the wharf in Monterey where you can take a boat tour and you can go out and you can see whales and dolphins if they choose to come see you, right? You can take a, you can take a whale viewing trip and not see any whales if the whales aren't cooperative. But, but there's something, there's something about, about going out to the seashore or on the deck of a boat and looking at the ocean. There's a beauty to it. There's a majesty. There's a power that you can appreciate when you're above the water. And, and, and the reality is, uh, living on the surface, staying there at the surface, it can seem fun, it can seem satisfying in lots of ways in life, and even looking at the ocean, but there, there might be more. Going deeper leads to a life of adventure that you never dreamed was possible. If you go deeper, just under the water, you're going to find an adventure. You're going to find things that you won't see standing on the seashore, you won't see standing on the deck of a boat. If you dive in the water... If you put on gear, if you put on, you know, goggles and a snorkel or if you get scuba gear on and you go into water. So go ahead and go to the next picture there. You're going to see something a little bit different at that point. You're going to see colors and beauty. You're going to experience this. The adventure gets greater. I mean, standing on the seashore is nice. Standing on the deck of a boat is nice. But if you want to adventure, go into the water. And you're going to experience something entirely different. I had an experience uh, going in the water, looking under the water. Uh, not long ago, I was actually taking a swim in, uh, at Lover's Point out in the water there, and I was swimming through the kelp beds. I was actually trying to learn how to swim in kelp, which is different than swimming in regular water because if you swing in regular water and you kind of pull and you go like this under the water, it'll catch ropes of kelp and you'll stop. So you actually have to go and you have to put your hand like this and sort of grab the water and the kelp and pull like this and slide across the kelp. It's and it's an adventure. <laughs> and so I'm swimming, I'm swimming out there in, in sort of kelp bed, open water, kelp bed, open water. So I'm coming out of this one kelp bed, going to the open water, do a couple of strokes, and I'm looking down, and you can't see much, it's kind of dark. And all of a sudden, there's a large mass directly below me, moving at the same speed as me. And I thought, well, that's interesting. This is an adventure, I thought. And so, <laughs> so I'm looking, so I take, you know, take a breath and kind of 
Say a little prayer and kind of look down. As I, this time I looked down, I take a few strokes looking down, and this large gray mass, white flecked gray mass, about three feet below me, moving the exact same speed as me, is a massive harbor seal swimming on its back, <laughs> looking straight at me at the exact pace I was going. So this was a fast harbor seal. And um, <laughs> I'm moving along, and... Um, and so, I, so, I, so through the rest of the open water for like 30, 40 more yards, it just kept swimming right the same distance from me, the same speed, staring at me. Every time I looked down there, it was looking at me, and I got kind of used to it. Then I hit some more kelp, and it disappeared. So when I got into the shore, I actually kind of crouched down in the water, and right to the water was just like just kind of above my mouth, below my nose, and I just blew some bubbles. I don't know why I thought that was like the universal call to harbor seals, but I just kind of blew some bubbles, and the seal came over and popped up just by, about where you are, right here, and just looked at me. So I, so I talked to it, which you do, I guess. But I, talk, I, said, I said, oh, were you the seal that was swimming underneath me? And he said, yes, I was. No, every, every, everything was true except for he never said anything. He was very rude, just said, didn't say a word, but just stared at me. And, uh, and so I talked to him for a minute, and then I, after a while, I was like, okay, goodbye. And I walked out, and he swam away. You don't get to experience that on the deck of a boat. You get in the water, the colors, the beauty, the experience of it. And, and that's true on the ocean. It's true in the life of faith. It really is true in the life of faith. We, we can't fully experience what God has for us unless we go deeper. I want to let you know that over the next four weeks, you're invited to dive deeper. You'll be invited these next four weeks to dive deeper into understanding the Christian faith. If you're not yet a follower of Jesus, and there's many people who come to shore and they're still kind of ex exploring and figuring out the Christian faith, you're going to get a chance to say, okay, what would it be like to kind of jump in the water? To, to experience Jesus. First steps into the water of faith. Some of you have been Christians for a few weeks or a few months or a year, and you're, you're, you know, maybe you're kind of maybe along, more along the surface, and you're going to be invited to dive deeper. Some of you have been Christians for 30, 40, 50 years, 60 years. You might even say, well, I've been a Christian a long time. I love the Bible. I love Jesus. I feel like my faith is deep and rich. But here's my suggestion. Maybe there's something deeper. Could it be that God is so big and so glorious and so amazing that you can always go deeper. Could that be? Could it be that, that God is so glorious, so loving, so compassionate, that there's always depths that you can explore that are greater, colors that are more beautiful, experiences that are richer and more adventurous? This is what God wants for you. And I think it's possible to put your faith in Jesus, I mean, to come to the cross, to say, I believe, I, I've messed up in my life, I've done things that are wrong, the Bible calls it sin, I know, I've, I, I, I know I can't fix myself, I look to Jesus who died on the cross, paid the price, rose again, and I've received Jesus. Is it possible to receive Jesus and still kind of just skim along on the surface of your faith? Is that possible? I think it is. But we miss out. We miss out on the adventure, the excitement of going deeper and deeper into our faith. And in these coming four weeks, you will be invited on multiple levels to go deeper. No matter where you are, whether you're not yet a Christian or whether you've been a Christian for 60 years, there is a deeper place to go. The question is, will you take the challenge? Will you go deeper? Now, to help us walk through this process, we're using a simple statement. It's only 13 words long. Simple baker's dozen of words. 13 words that our Shoreline's mission statement, our purpose statement. This was the mission statement of Shoreline before I became the pastor five years ago. This has been the heartbeat of Shoreline from day one. Why does Shoreline Church exist? We exist to help as many people as possible become totally committed to Jesus Christ. All that we do is wrapped into those 13 simple words. I hope in the next four weeks you can memorize it. Maybe I'll get somebody to maybe put it in very large lettering on the wall or something. Uh, maybe that'll help. <laughs> If somebody ever asks you, why does Shoreline Church exist? Why do you go to that church? Well, because Shoreline is seeking to help as many people as possible become totally committed to Jesus Christ. That's something I can get into deeply. That's something I can be committed to. And we break this mission statement into three primary ways of thinking. And you see uh, in, in each, of our, each of our venues, you'll see in here these three simple pictures. And each of these pictures are one part of what God calls us to do. So here's the first part. To help as many people as possible. And that's about how people know Jesus, come to faith in Jesus. We have these two leaves. It's this picture of new life, of growth. All through the Bible, these Bible passages about sharing the gospel, sharing the good news, sharing Jesus with people. It's like the harvest is plentiful. The fields are ripe for harvest. All this agricultural language. You know, that, that, that God you know, scatters seed so God can grow something in someone's heart. So we have this simple picture of just new life. 
of new growth. We want to help as many people as possible know Jesus. We exist for that purpose. It's not right if we've come to know his love and his grace to say, I got mine. So who cares about the rest of the world? I mean, we want to let everyone know how much God loves them. That's the first picture. To help as many people as possible. We, around here we call that organic outreach. Reaching out with the love of God in natural ways. Not in your face, not down your throat, just sharing the love of God. We're going to talk about that. Uh, the, the second image is this image of feet. That's not a hang ten for those of you that grew up in my generation. Little t-shirts with a little feet, you know, a little surfing right in the front of the board. Um, but uh, it, it's not a hang ten. It's the picture of the second part of our, our, of our mission statement. First part, to help as many people as possible. That's organic outreach, reaching out with the gospel. To become totally committed. This is discipleship. This is spiritual growth. This is taking your feet once you put your faith in Jesus and doing what Jesus says when he calls anybody. He always says this, follow me. So it's this, walking with Jesus, going deeper in how we walk with Jesus, walking more closely, more passionately, more faithfully with Jesus, going deeper. We're going to talk about going deeper and reaching out with God's love to our community, to our world. We're going to talk about going deeper and how, how do we just walk with Jesus more closely, more intimately. And then the third one, to help as many people as possible, organic outreach, to become totally committed, discipleship, to Jesus Christ, worship. We're worshipers. We worship one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that God entered human history, came to this world. Christmas, God with us, Emmanuel, Jesus came among us. And we want to go deeper in how we worship him, how we give our hearts to him, how we celebrate him, how we praise him. We want to go deeper as worshipers. Shoreline Church helps, uh, exists to help as many people as possible become totally committed to Jesus Christ. And so the simple picture of growth, organic outreach, new, new faith. The simple picture of feet, following, walking, going deeper in our walk with Jesus. And the simple arrow pointing upward. We're worshipers. We're going to grow in that. Now here's my challenge to you as we start. And I believe if you engage in this four-week journey, it will change your life not just for this month. It will change your life for the rest of your life. Because there is so much more to experience. We don't want to be skimming. And if we've gone deeper, there's a place we can go even deeper. So here's going to be a simple prayer we're going to pray in just a moment. All together. And I'm going to warn you, don't pray this prayer unless you mean it. Because God actually wants to answer it. And if you pray from your heart, he'll answer this. Here's going to be the prayer. God, wherever I am in relationship to you, will you take me deeper? Will you take me to a deeper place? God is waiting to do this. Your heart longs for this. It's an adventure. And guess what? No matter how deep you are, there's a deeper place. And God wants to do it. You want to pray? Now again, I'm going to pray it. You may pray if you mean it. But if you do it, let's ask God. Let's pray together. Living God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you are here. You are present. This is our prayer, God. Hear our hearts. Wherever we are spiritually right now, oh God, Take us deeper. Take us deeper in sharing your love. Take us deeper in walking with you. Take us deeper as worshipers. We dare to ask because, God, we believe you want to do this for your glory and for our good. Take us deeper, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God wants to answer that prayer. God will answer that prayer if you'll just engage with him and walk with him into it. So today, we're talking about going deeper in terms of that first part, the organic outreach, vision, sharing the love of Jesus, helping as many people as possible know Jesus. We're talking about going deeper into our community and into our world to share the love of Jesus. So here's what I want to do. I want to give you four simple ideas and four simple challenges. That if you'll take any of these or all of these and try them, it will take you deeper into your community, into our world with the love and the message of Jesus. Now, there's dozens of things I could talk about. I chose four that I think are important and a great starting place to go deeper. And even if you're already deep, you do this, it'll take you even deeper. All right? Going deeper into our community, four ways. Here's the first one. We go deeper into our community when we pray passionately and regularly for revival for ourselves and for people who are far from Jesus. If you want to go deeper, and sharing God's love, start here. Pray. Start praying. Pray more than you've ever prayed before. Go deeper and pray with passion. Pray, pray regularly. Pray for yourself. Pray for those who are far from God. So you wake up in the morning, and you're laying in bed, and you're doing this just to kind of stretch and kind of get your mind woken up a little bit. And before you even open your eyes, before you roll out of bed, you say, oh God, today, take me deeper 
into this community I live in. Let your love flow through me. If there's any way, God, you can use my life to show your presence, God, use me to share your love. In Jesus' name. And you open your eyes and you start your day. And then you walk onto your, your campus where you go to school. And as you're walking onto your campus, you say a quick prayer. God, if there's broken and hurting people around me today who need your love, let me bring it. God, if, if you could use me today on this campus. And, and maybe you say, God, if there's broken or lonely people, and by the way, God, I'm one of them. <laughs> but if there's anybody else, could I just notice? Could you show me? Could you help me in some way show your love and your care and your grace? And God will use you. You're going to your workplace. And you say, God, I ask you as I go into my workplace, help me show the presence of Jesus. And you know you're going to have a couple of really tough, challenging meetings with a couple of tough, challenging people. So you say, God, please help me control myself, keep my mouth shut, and not say anything I'll regret later. And just help me show your love. And then you go through a tough meeting, and, and, you, and you, you, God gives you strength just to, to show the grace of Jesus through it all. And that's where somebody comes up to you and says, how in the world do you keep treating that person so kindly the way they act? And you say, because I have a peace. I have a friendship with Jesus that just helps me. As a matter of fact, I prayed about it before the meeting <laughs> for God to give me strength. And I thought that might be coming. Really? I mean, God's part of your life like that. And God opens doors. You go through your whole day in your neighborhood, in your workplace. You go to your, to your golf course or where you swim or where you work out or where you socialize. And as you're going, you say, God, if there's any way you can use me to share your love, let me go deeper into this community of people with your love and your grace. And then you, at the end of the day, you lay in bed, you put your head on the pillow, and you say, God, I tried as best I could today to share your love and to be your person, to be your man or your woman, your young person, wherever you put me. And Lord, a number of times, I think I, I think I followed what you wanted. A couple of times, I missed it. But God, take what I've done. Take the words I've shared, the love I've shared, the seeds that I've scattered, and use them to bring new life. And now I got to put it in your hands because you can do what I can't do. And you go to bed. The next morning, you do it again. Man, do you know the opportunities God could open with the thousands of people who call Shoreline their church home, impacting tens of thousands of people every day? If we just walk through our day prayerful, God, give me opportunities. In Matthew chapter 9, verses 36 to 38, Jesus is looking at the world, looking at the people around him, and his heart is touched. We read this in verse 36. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. Look at the heart of Jesus. He had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. If you understand, shepherds in those days, sheep couldn't take care of themselves. And Jesus saw people, no matter what they looked like on the outside, he could see inside, and he knew that they were harassed and helpless, wandering like sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus said to his disciples, to his followers, the harvest is plentiful. There's that agricultural language. The harvest is plentiful, meaning lots of hopes are op hearts are open to Jesus. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. That's us. If you're a Christian, that's you. Ask the Lord of the harvest. That's prayer. Ask the Lord of the harvest. Ask God, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. That's that prayer when you wake up in the morning. God, send me out. Let me be your worker. Jesus says the harvest is plentiful. Lots of people are open to Jesus. It's the workers that are few. It's us forgetting that every day can be an adventure of prayer and reaching out with God's love. So here's the first challenge for you. Here's the first challenge, your deeper challenge. And I took this, this idea from Lee Strobel. He shared this at our Organic Outreach Conference. I've added one more one to it. We're going to call it a one, 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 one prayer. And here's your challenge. Pray for one person. Say, God, is there one person, family member, friend, person at work, somebody I care about that's far from you. Pray for one person you love and care about who's still far from Jesus. For one minute, at one o'clock, or if that doesn't work for you, pick another time, but at the same time every day, at one o'clock or some other time, every day for one month. For this next month, and I want to challenge you, if you want to do it right now, I generally, if you have your phones out and it's your Bible, it's your notes, that's great. But if you're like texting, tweeting, Instagramming, whatever, you, uh, you know, probably not now. But, um, but if, if you want to open it up and your phone up, and if you want to look, uh, for me, it's in my, I think it's in my clock feature. Um, and you want to open up, you can put in your phone, if you have a smartphone, you can put in there a repeating daily reminder, set an alarm for 1 o'clock or a time that works for you. And just do it, I have to actually, actually push Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, instead of having all days, which is strange, but it, it's fun to push all the buttons. And then uh, save it, and then put a little note in there. For me, I put pray for, in the name of the person I'm praying for, pray for this person, I put, and me, because pray the Lord of the Harvest sent us out, right? So I'm going to ask God to use me too. Every day, uh, and, and I put, oh, oh, organic outreach. God, just help me naturally share your love with this person. 
And, pray for, and I want to challenge. I, I hope that there, again, are thousands of people today that will go in either now or after the service, pray who's one person and pray for them every day for 30 days. God uses prayer. If you're not sure, I'll tell you a little story. This guy, Jason, a buddy of mine, he's a pastor in the Chicago area. I'm talking to Jason about, as pastors, the importance of us actually spending time with people that are far from Jesus and not getting all wrapped up in the church and being able to connect with people I have friends that are still aren't part of the church. And he said to me, man, I don't have time for that in my life because, he said, I'm a full-time pastor, I have four little kids, and I'm doing my master's right now. So I don't have time to spend time with people who aren't Christians. I work in the church, that's what I have time for. And, I, and he just said, I don't have any time, which concerned me. So I did something kind of sneaky. I said, well, Jason, will you at least pray? God, would you open opportunities? He's like, well, I could pray. Okay. So we start, started praying that day. We prayed right there when we wrapped up our time together. Next, literally next day, knock on his front door at his house. One of his neighbors, he doesn't know very well, not a Christian, not a churchgoer, standing at the door, and he says to Jason, you're a pastor. You, you, you're a pastor of that faith church, right? And he goes, yeah. He says, well, I've been reading the Bible. I don't understand it. Can you help me? <laughs> True story. He's like, Yes, okay. He, can you see him just slam the door? No, I don't have time. He, all of a sudden, he had the time. Why? Because it's a real human being. This, this guy started recruiting all the other neighbors who didn't go to church. Hey, you got to come to our Bible study. He starts going, oh, we got a Bible study going on. He starts inviting other people that don't go to church. to the. And all of a sudden, Jason, this pastor, is now leading a Bible study in his neighborhood. And he didn't do anything except pray. Will you start to pray more deeply, more passionately, more consistently? For those you know that are far from God, and for yourself to be responsive and to be available. That's the first challenge, a one, 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 one prayer. Number two, amen. Let's do it. Okay, good. Let's, you know what? We can just clap all day long. This is good. Um, second, second thing, we go deeper into our community when we build bridges, grow relationships, and connect naturally with people who don't yet know the love and the grace of Jesus. I mean, we have busy lives. We have a lot going on. But here's the reality for, for almost all of us. You have a group of people and friends you know who are Christians who love Jesus, who are part of your church and are connected, whether you're a guest or whether you're part of Shrine, that are connected with you through your, your life in the church. And you probably have a circle of friends or circles of friends that don't know Jesus. And here's where we tend to live our lives. We keep this one over here in our church. This is my churchy world. And this is my non-churchy world. And we don't want to mix those up too much. And yet I think there's something beautiful that happens when we take those two worlds and we bring them together. And when we have our friends who know and love Jesus, we have friends that, that are loving, kind, compassionate, gracious people who know Jesus, people who are loving, kind, gracious, compassionate, creative people who don't know Jesus. And you get them together and good things happen. And I'm not talking about getting people together and like, okay, now we're going to do a special prayer and have testimonies. I'm just talking about hanging out. Getting people together who are far from God and close to God and see what happens. And there's this great story in the Bible. And also in Matthew chapter 9, so if you're in Matthew 9, still just go back a little bit to verse 9. And here's this little story about Jesus. As he went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. He was a tax collector, hated by people in that generation. Follow me, Jesus told him. There's those little feet walking along. Follow me, Jesus told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. Matthew became a follower of Jesus. Now, tax collectors in those days were so hated that when, talk, when people talked about bad people, they said there's sinners a whole group of bad people, and there's tax collectors. Tax collectors had their own category because they were so hated. Seriously, they were so hated because they not, they, they not only collected money for the government, they would also always add a little extra for themselves, and they basically took poor people and walked on their backs to their own wealth. People hated them. But now Matthew became a follower of Jesus, and his life's being changed by Jesus. He's going deeper in his faith. So he has this little get-together at his house. I love this. Look at the next verse. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, so Matthew's having a little get-together, many tax collectors and sinners, there's the two groups, tax collectors and sinners, came and ate with who? With Jesus and his disciples. So Matthew says, hey, invite all my friends over to hang out at my house, have a meal. So he's got tax collectors, prostitutes, and sinners, and Jesus, God in human flesh. If you're worried that groups will have a hard time mixing, Jesus was there, okay? None of, you, none of your Christian friends are that good. Okay, it's Jesus, right? It's Jesus and his disciples, and they're hanging out. And good things happen when you get people together. So here's my challenge for you. Here's your deeper challenge. Hold a Matthew party of some sort. Plan a gathering, small or large. It can be four people. It can be 10 people. It can be 40 people. Hang, plan a gathering, small or large, with some friends who love Jesus and some who are still far from God's grace. 
or invite someone to church or to a church-based activity that will connect them with great Christian people and the Lord of the church. Maybe your Matthew party happens here on this campus. You know, we got this marriage thing coming up, and it's going to be a half-day thing on marriage. Invite non-church people to that that want to build a stronger marriage. They're coming to the church. They'll know they'll get some Jesus stuff, but they're going to they're get a lot of great things to help them in their marriage. The first time I ever went to church was a casino night the church was putting on. And I went because it was a casino night. But there was a thousand young people there, a bunch of them non-church, a bunch of them church, but I met some really neat people, and God began to build some relationships. That was part of my journey to Jesus. Or plant something in your home. I had a couple say to me after the first service, they actually said, we were talking the other day about we need to do a Matthew, they used to, we used to, a Matthew party, like Matthew, bringing together my two worlds of friends. And they said, but today was like, now we got to do it because we've been talking about it, we haven't done it yet. Connect your world. Don't live with your Christian world and your non-Christian world as separate worlds. Bring them together, and God will do good things. And again, when you bring them together, it doesn't have to be planning some big religious thing. Just hang out. Because here's what's going to happen. You're going to have friends that are far from God, that don't know Jesus, and they believe the lies the media says that all Christians who go to church and believe the Bible are hate-mongering, mean-spirited, horrible people. And then they're going to meet your friends who are Christians. They go, well, how do you know these? How do you know these guys? Oh, they go to my church. Oh, oh but they seem nice and normal. Well, <laughs> they are. Oh, I thought all oh, those Christians were. And they're going to realize, oh, that's a caricature the media is painting, but it's not true. I mean, there's a there's you can meet some Christians that are hard and tough and mouthy. I mean, you can get that occasion, but aren't most Christians that you know just kind of nice people? I mean, they just they love Jesus, they love people, they love their community. They, uh, you know, and so bring those worlds together, see what God does. First, go deeper as you pray. Go deeper as you connect your world and your different worlds together. Number three, we go deeper into our community. When we serve, give, and bless our church, our community, and our world. You want to go deeper as a follower of Jesus, and you want to go deeper in a way that impacts the world? Share. Share your time. Share your abilities. Share your resources. And share them generously. It doesn't have to be here at Shoreline, but just Share. Be, I mean, God has given, so, whether you, and I love the definition uh, Pastor John gave earlier. It wasn't about how much, it's about the heart. If you have a lot, share a lot. If you have a little, share a little, but share. And become more and more and more generous. Listen to these words from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. This is verses 6 and 8. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. It's about the heart. And God is able to bless you abundantly. Listen to, listen to all the alls. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. It's works, it's generosity, it's living a life like this, where you're open, where you're generous. And you know what? Listen closely. That doesn't happen by accident. I accidentally became generous. Whoa, I didn't even see it coming. <laughs> With all my extra stuff and money, right? No, you choose. You decide. God, let my heart be generous so my hands and my life and my time are shared freely. And man, how God can use us in our world when we become generous. So we set a goal to be generous and as a church to give 600 backpacks and materials for these kids. And we blew it because we overshot our goal by 33%. You know, that's a good blowing it, by the way. Um, you go, I love that. That's, and, and you know how often with showing, you know how often that's the story? When we say we're, we're going to choose to be generous. But you know what? That, it wasn't like one day all of a sudden 800 backpacks and materials showed up. We planned it. We worked it. We talked about it. We shared with you. We let you know. We were intentional, and guess what? People gave. And a bunch of little kids that you'll never get to see face-to-face -face probably, but you saw a couple on the screen, are blessed. And we've gone a little bit deeper because we're giving and we're sharing and we're caring. That's what God's people do, and it shows the presence of Jesus. So here's the deeper challenge. Look at your giving patterns and attitude towards being generous towards God's work and commit to take a step deeper in generosity. I want to encourage you to look at the last month. Look at the last month. Take some time and go, okay, in the last month, how much time have I given to help others? It could be through a, a community thing. It could be through the church. How much time have I given just to help and serve others? 
And then also, how much have I given of my resources? And here's the challenge. Go deeper. Decide to give more. Make a commitment to that. What you give, and I'll tell you this, what you give to the ministry of Shoreline is impacting more people than you know. What you give in this ministry is having a greater impact than you know. Shoreline Church, and those, some of you are visitors here from other churches, or maybe you don't go to church at all, but I want you to understand something. This is such a unique community. This church and the place that we live, the potential to impact the world is huge. And God, God has put on my heart a couple of years ago, and God's showing me that this has got his vision for us as a body to be involved in our world. God put on my heart a couple of years ago, and for sure I believe this is God's vision for us. In the next 10 years, that we would influence 10,000 churches and train leaders from 10,000 churches all over the world how to do organic outreach, how to reach out naturally with the love of God, not beat people over the head, not shut things down their throat, just love people and share the love of Jesus. And here's what struck me. If we could train t- leaders of 10,000 churches, and each of those churches just reached 100 people, that, 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 that blossom of new life would come and they'd come to know Jesus, we as a church would be impacting a million people who will be in heaven someday. I mean, it'd, be, it'd be cool to think, okay, what, what if we, you know, we reach another 1,000 or 2,000 people in Monterey? We will. If we're loving the world, God will use us here too. But what if we were training leaders from all around the world? In November at the Organic Outreach Conference, we're going to have three teams from churches in New Zealand And they're flying their people here to Shoreline for the express reason of learning to share the love of Jesus naturally in New Zealand. And then there's a guy coming from New Zealand who's going to be the one who we train so he can then mentor and train those three churches because we can't do it from here in New Zealand. So this year in November at our Organic Outreach Conference, we're training a leader who will be training three churches who want to change an entire nation for Jesus. Shoreline Church is doing that. That's God's call. And this is what God's put on mine and Sherry's heart as we've been talking and praying about this. The next 10 years... 10,000 churches impacted by this church. To do that, what God's put on my heart is, I need to commit to be here for the next 10 years and to be the pastor here for the next year. God, God gives me lots of fun opportunities. I do other ministry, but this, God has said, this is for Kevin and Sherry Harney. This is the church you're going to serve. This is where you're going to be for the next 10 years. And here's what I'm committing. I am going to serve harder than I've ever served in my life. These next 10 years, I feel like God is calling me to stay, and Sherry and I to lay our lives down for the ministry of this church to impact churches all over the world to help this blossoming growth of new people knowing Jesus. So I'm committed to serve harder than I've ever served before. And I'm committed to give more than I've ever given before. And Sharon, I love to give. But God is saying this to us. Deeper. Deeper. Because there's work to be done and good news to be shared. And this is a unique place. And here's my invitation to you. Will you go deeper too? Will you serve? Will you share? Will you love? Will you care? Will you give? Will you invest in people's lives at a deeper level? Because for some reason, this unique place, this Monterey Peninsula, where people come from all over the world, whether it's, it's coming for resorts or coming for a holiday or coming through business or coming through the arts and Carmel. I, I was told that Carmel ships more art out than any other city in the nation except for New York City. This is an art center. This is a military center. This is a business center. This is a resort center. This, this little peninsula here about 160,000 people. With, with, with Salinas, with another 180,000 people. That's, a, that's not a massive area. God can send his good news all over the world because people are coming and going from here all the time. And God's put us here. Will you give yourself to that vision to help as many people as possible know Jesus? And then one more challenge. One more thing. We go deeper into our community when we know, believe, and share the gospel. If we're going to impact the world, we have to know the message of Jesus. Every one of us. We have to know how to share that simple story of Jesus. If someone were to come up to you and say, you go to that Shoreline Church, right? Yeah. So what, what, what does that church do? You say, well, we help as many people as possible become totally committed to Jesus Christ. What does that mean? You say, well, it means that we want people to know Jesus, we want people to grow in Jesus, and we want people to learn to worship Jesus and keep going deeper. Oh, and they look at you and they say this. This is a family member of a friend says, how could I become part of that? How could I come to know Jesus? What do you say? Come to church next Sunday. No, don't say that. That's fine. Invite him. Let me go get a pastor. Let me go get a... No. We want you to be ready. God wants you to be ready to share the simple story of Jesus. To just simply, gently, clearly tell the story. 
I wrote a book called Organic Outreach for Ordinary People. I don't stand up here and almost ever talk about things I write or other things I do. I talk to Shoreline, but this book, Organic Outreach for Ordinary People, is designed to help ordinary people naturally share the love of Jesus. If you've never read it, if you've got a copy at your home and you haven't read it, read it. If you don't have a copy, I encourage you to download it, get it, read it. We'll, if you can't afford one, we'll loan you one and we'll get a little, little organic outreach library going, whatever. But just read it. There's like six or seven ways to share your faith. But here's just one little example from the Bible. And all of them are biblical, but here's just one of them. 1 Peter 2, 22 to 25. This simple passage has pretty much the whole story and the message of Jesus in it. And if you, if you learn this and share this with somebody, you can tell them the whole story of Jesus just by opening your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 2 and reading these verses and talking about it. It starts this way. He committed no sin. That's Jesus. Sinless Son of God. He was God with us. Emmanuel Christmas. God with us. Jesus committed no sin. No deceit was found in his mouth. And it's talking about the, the cross when he's dying on the cross for our sins. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, while he's dying on the cross for our sins, instead, he entrusted himself to God, to him who judges justly. And look at verse 24. For he himself, Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the cross. He took our sins on himself. So that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. We can be changed to new people. We can die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you have been healed. And I love this. This goes back to the first passage we looked at. Remember when Jesus looked out over the world and what he saw? He saw people like sheep without a shepherd. So here... Peter reminds us, for you were like sheep going astray. There was a day, every one of us who says that we're a Christian now, who believes in Jesus, there was a day we were a wandering sheep. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the overseers of your souls. The overseer of your souls, that, that we've come home to Jesus. And when we know that, when we've come home to Jesus, how can we not share it with others? When that moment is right, so I'm going to challenge you to learn to share the simple message of the gospel, the simple message of the faith. Here's your deeper challenge. I call it practice and pray. If you want to dig deeper, practice and pray. Practice sharing the message of Jesus and pray for opportunities. So here's the challenge. Practice sharing the gospel of Jesus with a Christian friend or a family member. And the next week, go to another Christian and say, can I practice sharing the message of Jesus with you? And actually practice. You want to get good at anything? Practice. Our musicians up here, they're so, do such a wonderful job. They practice. They not only volunteer for three services all Sunday morning. They get here like six in the morning. Stay till like one o'clock. They not only do that. They meet for practice and they practice at home. If you want to be able to share the love of Jesus, which is so important, practice. So just sit down with this passage or one of the ways to share the gospel through organic outreach, something you've learned in one of our training times, and just practice sharing the message. And then pray. That's the second part. Pray for an opportunity to share the gospel with a non-believing family member or friend. God, will you give me a chance to share the message of your love with somebody? And keep praying, because God's going to open the door. And when he does, you're going to be ready. And you're not forcing it on them. They, they, God opens the door. They ask you. They want to know more. So you share the story of Jesus. That's just that simple story. As human beings, we mess up, and we've wandered from God. We're separate from him. But God still loves us so much he sent Jesus to come to the world. God with us. And the perfect one, the only perfect human being who's ever lived, Jesus, was beaten, abused, and hung on a cross and took our place and our punishment and our sins all on himself. And he died. So it's finished. It's paid for. Three days later, he rose again. That's Easter. And he offers forgiveness. It's, it's, it's a simple, true message that can change your life. And if you've been changed by that truth, you can share it with others. And if you haven't, you can receive that. There's lots of ways it's showing. We want to help you learn to share your faith naturally. You know, our next outreach training, sign up for it. If you haven't been to our training, sign up for it. If you've been to it, sign up and come again because every year it's new training. The Organic Outreach Conference. I mean, we've got people getting on planes and paying to fly from New Zealand to come here to be trained. Coming from Pacific Grove just isn't that hard, right? Coming from Salinas is easy. Sign up and become part of that training. And then also, if you want to go deeper, if you've received Jesus and you've never been baptized, we want you to go a little deeper <laughs> under the water where the, har where the, ba the harbor seals are, right? Uh, Pastor Dennis is leading a class. Pastor Zach, Pastor Zach is, oh, thank you. Pastor Zach is leading a class today during the next service. So when the service is done, if you want to be baptized next Sunday, 
Just go to the Connection Center and say, I want to sign up right now for the baptism class and show me where it is, and they'll walk you over and take you to the room and, and be part of that class. And then next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating in those same warm waters where I met that seal, we're going to be doing some baptisms. <laughs> so I encourage you to, to think about that. And if you pray to re when we close in prayer in just a moment, if you pray to receive Jesus today, I encourage you to sign up and come to that class this next hour and be baptized next weekend. All right? And then, uh, and then I want to let you know this, um, that, that before I, I uh, hand you off to the venue pastors, we're going to pray. Um, if, if you pray to receive Jesus or if you don't have a Bible, come and talk with me or in all of our venues as well. And on Monday night... Um, we've got a Bible we want to give you. We've got a 50-day reading plan to get you started in the Bible. We want to just get to know you a little bit better. And so after the service, if you pray to receive Jesus, will you come forward and talk with me or Pastor Dennis or anybody who's up here for prayer? They'll have Bibles for you. Or if you're in a venue, talk with the venue pastor. We're going to pray right now and ask one more time, God, take us deeper into our community. Or for some of you, you're going to pray this prayer. God, for the first time, I step into the water. I want to receive Jesus. And the adventure begins. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, for all of us who are here who've put our faith in you, whether it was two weeks ago or 52 years ago, God, take us deeper. Take us deeper into this community, to people who just need to know that you love them, that you care about them. Help us be able to naturally share your love. Help us be more prayerful, more caring, more connecting, and use us to share your love. And if you're here today, you've never received Jesus, and you want to start that new life, you want to take that first step into the water of faith and start that adventure. Would you pray with me? Would you say, God, I don't have it all figured out. God, I'm not a Bible scholar. I don't have all the answers. But if Jesus really died on the cross for all of my wrongs, if my sins and wrongs could be washed away, God, I admit I, admit I need it, but if that could really happen through Jesus, I give my heart to Jesus. I put my faith in Jesus. I want to dive deep into what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And so I ask Jesus, come into my heart and my life. Forgive me and wash me clean. And give me new life, an adventure of life I've never had before. And God, for all of us in this coming month, will you take us deeper than we've ever gone before in the adventure, the beauty of walking with Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen. I want to hand our venues off to their venue pastors. God bless you. They'll share a few couple, a couple things with you. And